Gentlemen, start your engine. Welcome to the 3.5. I'm Seth Sharp alongside my brother Sutton Sharp. Today we're going to be reviewing the 1987 Daytona 500 in 3.5 minutes. The 87 Winston Cup season was full of change as Darrell Waltrip left the car he won the championship in two years prior with Junior Johnson to go drive a new car for Rick Hendrick. Terry Labonte, who won the 1984 championship, took over Darrell's ride in the number 11 for Junior Johnson. Kyle Petty and the Wood Brothers moved back to their legendary number 21, while the number 7 went to young Alan Kowicki driving for his own team. Cale Yarbrough will also be driving for his own team in the new number 29, while he was replaced by Davey Allison in the 28 car. Speed Week's 1987 got off to a fast start with Bill Elliott winning the Bush Clash. Elliott followed his clash win with his third consecutive Daytona 500 pole, this time with a record-setting speed of over 210 miles per hour. He couldn't, however, follow that up with a victory in the twin 125-mile qualifying races as Ken Schrader inched him to the line for the victory in the first race, the second won by Benny Parsons. Let it out! After crashing his primary car in the twin 125 qualifying races, A.J. Foyt was forced to use a car out of the Morgan McClure stable. He dropped out of the Daytona 500 after only 10 laps and was not very happy with his crew. It's just a damn shame what's going on with my crew, why they can't get their heads together. Bill Elliott led the first 35 laps before exchanging the lead with Buddy Baker and Jeff Bodine. The first caution came out on lap 41 when after a botched pit stop, Davey Allison lost a wheel coming to speed on the front stretch. Ken Schrader, driving for Junie Donlevy, was contending for the win all day until his air wrench broke on a pit stop on lap 141. Dale Earnhardt came on strong late, taking the lead from Bill Elliott after contact with under 20 laps to go. The race came down to green flag pit stops as Bill Elliott pulled his car into the pits with under 13 laps to go, and Dale Earnhardt, Buddy Baker, and the other contenders came in right after. Earnhardt struggled in the pits, with his pit stop taking three more seconds than the other drivers, leaving the pits in nine seconds and seeing his Daytona 500 chances dashed two years in a row. The late race pit stops left Richard Petty, who was searching for his eighth Daytona 500 and his first win since 1984, with the lead with only seven laps to go. Defending 500 champion Jeff Bodine took the lead as crew chief Gary Nelson tried to stretch their fuel to the finish. Nelson told Mike Joy they would either win the race or run out trying. Bodine had a 23 second lead when he ran out of fuel with three laps to go, the opposite of what happened the previous year when Dale Earnhardt ran out of fuel handing Bodine the victory. As Bodine coasted down the backstretch, Bill Elliott retook the lead and held off a late charge from Benny Parsons to secure his second Daytona 500 victory. Elliott led 104 of the 200 laps and in victory lane was quick to give all the praise to his crew. I'll tell you what the crew did it today, you know, every time we beat the guys out on pit stops. Rounding out the top five were Richard Petty, Buddy Baker, and Dale Earnhardt. Early favorite Ken Schrader wound up in seventh position, while late leader Jeff Bodine, who eventually did make it to pit road, would wind up in 14th position. Tune in next week as we recap the 1987 Goodwrench 500 from Rockingham.